Today, I want to speak about breast implants and my journey with um, recovery of removing my breast implants. And I was on a show with Queen Afua, and um, it came up, the journey of the heart and how deeply connected the breast is with the heart. And um, I just want to share my story just a little bit because I know I spoke about it and I touched on it here and there, but I never really, really, really got really deep into this conversation. I, I kind of um, had to take a break because while I was healing from my surgery of getting my explanted, my explant surgery, getting it explanted, I should say, um, my son simultaneously just got really sick and I had to stop my own process of my own healing to take care of him and become that healer for him while I was healing myself and now that, that happened earlier this year and that was the most challenging thing that I ever had to experience so now I'm at a place where things are a lot more grounded um, I have um, gone through that initiation because I call a lot of life experiences a sort of initiation when we go through major 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 life changes um, it is our way of going from one level to the next, from one room to the next, from leaving um, a past life and to a new level and the life that we are becoming, the life that we're going to live. Um, the initiation process happens at many different areas of our lives, like when we're initiated into adolescence, when we're initiated into um, womanhood through childbirth, when we're initiated into marriage, um, when we're initiated into menopause, those are many different phases of our lives. And there's some in between that I may have missed. But those parts are, are, um, are those checkpoints in where you're no longer able to turn back, where you can only move forward. And you usually during the time of initiation, you are tested. You're given a test. And it's, and it's a challenge also. And that's why sometimes we're facing these major life crises and major life challenges. And um, and we're wondering, why is this happening to me? And I, can, I can't handle this and my life is upside down. It's usually a form of an initiation. And um, you have a lesson to learn in that initiation. So if you're going through an initiation at this time in your life, just hold on. It's going to be all right. You just have to breathe through, get through, um, and surrender to that initiation because you can't fight it. It's your time to move on to the next phase. So in this conversation, I want to speak about part of some of the initiation points in my life. And one of those initiation points were me, a divorce, going through a divorce. At age 28, I had three children and um, I was going through the time in my life at age 28 was that time where I was moving into my 30s and I was becoming this woman that this new woman and I didn't I didn't know who she was but I know that she needed to break free from who she was before and um as I went through this divorce which was very challenging because this is the only you know like the real relationship that I've had for 12 years and had three children and went through um, many, many, many life challenges with this person, it came to the point where I was ready to release that relationship because it was no longer in alignment to who I was becoming. Um, and even if I didn't know I was, I was becoming this person, I could no longer um, find fulfillment where I was. And I had to make a decision. During making that decision, part of that was my young self, my young 28 year old self was believing that becoming new, meaning this new woman that I had to be, had to, I also had to have a new body. And I breastfed three children. And after breastfeeding, we all know what happens. It's not to everyone, but to a good amount of us. The breast starts to sag, especially if you breastfeed for a long bit of time, especially if you breastfeed multiple children. The, the breast becomes flatter. You don't, you know, you're always picking at yourself and you're looking at yourself in a mirror and kind of like shaming yourself or you're looking at yourself like in a disgusting way or you're, you're wondering why is that you can't have the body that you had before or what happened to you and you're not feeling secure. And of course now in this, um, in this very insecure space, 
you start to look at options of adding to your body. And at that time, I worked in the industry. I worked in the, um, the entertainment industry, fashion, beauty. I was in the limelight. I used to be, um, I was known as the Emmy Award winning celebrity hair designer. That was right before I got that title, but I was working with celebrities as um, the creator of their crowns, their hair, their hair pieces, their hair designs, their image. And in that world, everyone, mostly everyone, was adding something to their bodies. Everyone, pretty much. It was like a normal conversation. It was like, I'm, it was like, oh, I'm getting full makeup on. Oh, let's add some breasts in there also, <laughs> you know? So it was never like a thing where um, it was looked at as a shameful thing. It was like the thing to do at that time. Everyone was getting their breasts done. No one was talking about how long you would keep them or um, the consequences or the illnesses or the sickness that may happen. The doctors didn't tell you about it. It was just like, oh yeah, get your breasts done. Get them done every 10 years or whatever the case is, or this will help you to be more confident. This will help you to fill out more. You know, it's like so many different parts of this conversation. And then when I'm, when I'm remembering the stories of going to the doctor and um, choosing if I want the breast to be a teardrop, the size that I want it, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm going to get these breasts now, I'm going to go all out. And that was the mindset I got. I went from a B, a B cup without any volume because I was completely flat from breastfeeding. The breast was like long, like, you know, very flat and long, like doggy ears, really. And um, I'm sure a lot of women could relate to that. Unfortunately, I have to say it like that because that was the mindset at that time. And, you know, I, I, I decided that I'm going to become this new person. I got those breast implants. I got them filled all the way up, like, you know, because I didn't get a lift. What I did at the time was just like all that stretched out skin from breastfeeding that you know when you're pregnant your breast size grows so I went from a size b to a size d and then settled after the whole process of breastfeeding settled back at a size b with no volume so imagine all of the stretched skin hanging there and instead of looking at it as this is life this is a part of me this is this is a part of the transition into motherhood I serve my purpose of course in a world of vanity you're not going to feel that way a world where you know, you're seeing all these swimsuit models with beautiful breasts, small waistlines and hips and booty and, and working in the industry where this is the thing that you do. Why would I think about appreciating my body? Of course I wouldn't. And so, and plus not, no one was really talking like that. It was about getting work done at that time. So just to move it right along, you know, um, I got these double D size breasts, double D. And I'm talking about, boom, they were just like out there. And of course, it's like the doctor's like, oh, it's going to make your figure look so beautiful. It's way smaller, the breast bigger. And I remember coming home from that appointment and waking up from that anesthesia, looking at my breasts in the mirror and like being completely disappointed, like completely in tears about it because, you know, I was like, oh, I'm that girl now. I'm her now. Like I became this whole new character like this whole new person. I'm just overnight, boom, I'm her now. And so I had to get to know this new person. And it was before I was like this very, this fitness woman, very athletic. And I was, you know, into bodybuilding and natural body shaping. And immediately when I got those breasts, it took that away from me because the whole attention was no longer on my six pack that I had naturally. It was the big old breast. And I felt like those breasts really aged me, like greatly aged me because, you know, I added something. It's like I added more weight, you know, energetically to my life. But I'll tell you, you know, when I got them done, I said to myself, well, this is what we got to work with and we don't work it. We are going to work it. And you better believe that's exactly what I did. I worked it. I worked those breasts. I will. I wore the bikinis. I wore the low cut. I, I, I mean... You know, I, I even started to think those breasts was mine. I started to think, I, I sported them so much, I thought those breasts was mine. After so many years, I held on to those breasts for 13 years. And I would say that I just released them almost a year ago, November 18th of 2019 is when I released those breasts. And um, those implants, that silicone for my body. Because what happened is that over the years of becoming this woman, of, of um, peeling off the layers, of shedding the skin like a snake, 
of becoming, of blooming and blossoming into this butterfly and starting to really get to know myself and starting to eat healthy and, and do the work and do the womb work and do the healing work, I was still carrying around these breasts in the middle of learning spirituality and going to the Amazon and going to Brazil and going to Peru and going into the ceremony and doing the sacred practices and learning from the teachers because that was the truth, the truth inside of me, that girl, that woman, that little girl, she wanted healing and she was naturally a healer. But of course now in the physical world, it was time to perform. And so as the years went on and I, I, I became more and more attracted to nature, to the natural flow, my, my lenses changed. The way I looked at myself changed. I started to become very disappointed at myself um, for the decisions I made. And here I am, you know, carrying people along to this divinity, seeing themselves as divine. And I felt like I, I was misleading, like I'm living a lie, like I wasn't being truth. And it wasn't that I'm not living this holistic life. It was because I was carrying the essence of my old life into my new life. And that little transition, that little breaking point, that little crossroad right there, it's a very delicate space. It's a very tricky space. And because people are not really under... May, a lot of people may not know who you were before that and maybe think that those breasts were real. I mean, they look really natural. As big as they were, because I breastfed, they hung a bit. So they didn't look like they were like up to your chin. You know, they just look like someone who had big breasts, right? And so it's how do you explain this to your audience? Or, to, or you know, you become popular and now people know you for this thing, Right? How do you explain that to your audience? How do you say, well, it wasn't mine all along, you know? Or you may get some comments from people here and there. Oh, you have a fake body or you're talking holistically and you have a fake body and all this stuff. You may get that too. And that's, that was a hard, that, that, that transition place, you know? It's like that crossroad from one, it's like crossing from one street to the next or crossing from one side of the street over to the next, that little part right there is the part that gets really confusing for a lot of people. It's because you you know that you're on this on this path and you're leading people on this path as well. However, we all have things that we carry with us and we all have things that we carry from another lifestyle into this new life. You, you may have not been able to let it all go or you may not even have had the funds to let it to, to actually get surgery and say, hey, I did this to my body, but that's not who I am anymore. So I'm ready to release this, but I just can't do this right now. It's so many different aspects of it, right? Or you may not be emotionally ready to show up, you know, not to yourself, not just to yourself, but to show up to the world as, okay, and be confident. This is who I am. There's so much fear, you know, so much fear in what are people going to think about me? What are they going to say about me? Are they going to say that I've been living a lie this whole time? Are they going to judge me? And really, a lot of people say things like, I don't care what people think about me or things like that. But honestly, a lot of us do care. A lot of us, we are affected by the things that's coming at us because it's energy that's coming at us. So we could act like, oh, this thing doesn't affect me or this doesn't bother me. But I will say that a lot of people are not being honest. You know, when we get shamed and we get things thrown at us, it doesn't feel good. It's in your mind. Even if you say, oh, whatever, that's just that. It's in your energy field. You know, it's, it's like, especially when someone is judging your character and only you know the truth of who you are. Only you know, and only those close to you, okay? Those who know the truth. But on a public level, people can only see image or they can only have perceptions of what they think is true. And that was a hard space for me to get to the point where I, I wasn't worried about what people felt anymore. To get to the place where I was confident in who I was and get to the place where I just said, fuck it. They're going to see me for exactly who I am. Take it or leave it. You don't like it? It's okay. This is who I am. I don't have to perform anymore. There is no performance. It's only truth. And this is the truth. And so I went through the journey. I finally got the courage 
to release those breasts. Why? Because, you know, one, it was no longer who, I didn't need them anymore. I didn't need them to validate who I am or how um, I show up or what people expect from me. I didn't need that anymore. Two, I was also going through symptoms of illness of those, that silicone, that poison that I put into my body. And I felt trapped in my body. I felt like, what is this? I got these bags of poison in my body and they're stuck in there. I can't just put my hand in and pull them out like a, like a padded bra. They were real life bags filled with gel stuck inside of my body to fill out a shape to give the illusion of these perky breasts that was meant to give life, to bring life that served this purpose. But yet I want to go back now and work against nature. And the thing is, is that, you know, I had to, I had to go through many journeys with this. I had to first forgive myself and first, you know, say to myself, even that girl who you were before with the implants, she, she did her job. She served her purpose. And now I release her with love, not with hate. And I wanted to feel well. I wanted to feel truly healthy. I didn't want to have to like overtake supplements and, you know, you know, do all of these excessive things to, to balance out the way I was feeling imbalanced. Because then many times I would be, I would go through these, these waves of emotions all the time. Or sometimes I was just fatigued a lot. Or I would get these rashes. Or I would get this swelling. And, and I didn't, and I, I couldn't, my, my breathing was the main thing. Like, being able to take a deep breath without having these implants sitting on my ribs and my lungs. Like, being able to do like, oh, like a long, oh, that was hard. I couldn't do that before because the airways wouldn't flow because it was blocked. Now this, and so I say this not to shame anyone who may have gone through this experience or may have implants or anything, because I'm that girl, you know. I say this to bring some awareness that, you know, it, you know, you are so enough. Like, you know, when you could really get to the point to really appreciate who you are, if you really think about it, you're really doing a lot of things that we do is to be acceptable in the eyes of another person or others. And we should have learned this lesson a lot during quarantine because in quarantine, um, while we had to stay in our house, a lot of us grew our hair out. We had to learn, you know, how to do our own nails and pedicures and um, how to be without certain things that we may have been addicted to or attached to, I should say, before. And we realized that we didn't need all the things that we thought that we needed before. You know, the men started growing out their hair and it's like, oh, yeah, I like this. Some of the women stopped shaving their bodies. I even got to the point where I was like, oh, I got underarm hair. What's the point of shaving it? I'm not going anywhere. Then I realized that a lot of things that we do is because we're showing up in the public and to be acceptable. And it's a process of learning how to accept thyself as you are. It takes training, unlearning, unlearning, and falling back in love with yourself again by accepting this is who I am. I am more than my breast. I am more than my makeup. I am more than my hair. I'm a whole soul that wants to be free. And I want love. And when we can come to that point of acceptance, it's much easier. And so I let those breast implants go. And I remember coming home from the hospital that day and crying my eyes out. I'm going to, re I'm going to release that film because I never released it yet. How I came out of that anesthesia and the things that I was saying when I was like in between both realms, I wasn't fully back and I was still there. And so all kind of stuff I was saying, I have it all on film because Troy was right there filming it when I came out of anesthesia. And um, my goodness, so much guilt, you know, I had so much guilt that, you know, I, and I couldn't believe it. I said, I said, I was holding those implants in my hand and they were so heavy. And I was like, what did I do to myself? I can't believe this, you know? But um, we all have a story to tell, right? 
And we all have many journeys that we go through in this life experience. And we could just look back at it and reflect on it and say, wow, that was that chapter. And now I'm, re I'm rewriting a new chapter. Rewrite your life anytime you feel that it's time to create a new chapter. The way things are doesn't mean that it's the way things have to end. You are constantly creating your story. So here I am, proud with my natural breast, my natural body, and I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of this. I'm proud to share this journey because I feel so free. I feel so peaceful. I feel so much healthier. I can breathe. I can breathe again, you know? Um, and I, this journey, even just being able to sit here and share this story has given me new life. It has given me new life. Everything about me has shifted and changed. You know, the way I wear my hair is different. The way I dress is different. The way I, I show up unapologetically is different. It's just different. You know, I'm not afraid to tell a story. I'm not afraid um, to speak the truth, my truth. Because my truth may be different than your truth. We all have our truth. And, and, and also a lot of us, what I've noticed is that we like to judge people based on their past stories. We like to judge people based on who we think they are, on the way they look. You know, but if we look at each other closely, we can see ourselves. We are all mirrors, mirrors reflecting back to one another. So when you judge another, you are judging yourself. Thank you so much. Raw and uncut. Thank you for watching.